Hello everyone. We're having another Etsy ESB tonight. Now, this is not necessarily a review per se, because I'm gonna talk about three bands and two things regarding two bands that I don't actually have their records. I mean, I'll show you what I have of those bands. And then the third one I have nothing by because I'm literally just, I literally just found out about them like last December and I, re and I gave their recent record back in 2019 a good listen. And I'm not really going to talk about that record per se. I'm mostly going to just kind of talk about them, you know, just as a whole sort of. Now, let's start. So I'm going to start off with probably the, I mean, because these first two bands just put out, like, great records. I'm going to start with the record that came out first uh, out of the two. And... I'm going to bring up the track listing here first because um, I don't have it, I, as I say, I don't have it here in front of me and I don't want to misstep on a track. <clears throat> so, come on computer, somehow it's it, it's working magically, other days it just, it, you couldn't get it to work worth a fuck really. Okay, alright, so we're going to talk about this band. And that's Gojira. This record here is The Way of All Flesh. And it was released on October 14th of 2008. This record is absolutely smashingly good. Now. The record I'm going to talk about for a little bit. Is the brand new record they released back on April the 30th. 2021 obviously this year. Uh, it's called Fortitude. There's some songs on this record that are good. They're very much a, uh, a follow-up to Magma. Um, like Bored for One Thing, Another World, Amazonia, Into the Storm. <clears throat> the Sphinx, on the other hand... Easily could be on this record. Easily. Or even from Mars to Sirius. <clears throat> um, tracks like New Found is alright. Hold On is alright. Fortitude, not so bad. End of the Storm's pretty nasty and pretty heavy. Uh, the Sphinx, as I said, could have easily gone on uh, the way of all flash. Another World, at first I really dug it. And then it really just went from here down real fast. And I don't know if it's because of the fact, and, and I'm going to, and I, I'm thinking that it has a lot to do with the fact that when they come out with Born for One Thing, after that, that song for me really sort of took the place of Another World. <gasps> Another World's still a good song. Like, instead of going completely down, it's kind of come back up to... <gasps> Oh, excuse me, like it's kind of come down about like another world's here and born for one thing's like here. So the thing is, is like it's it's a good record. Um Is it better than Magma? No, it, they're probably pretty pretty well on par. And I had quite a good uh I had quite a lot of love for Magma, and I still do. But I find the thing about, like, songs like Sphinx, the chant, which is slowly coming around with me, but mostly Sphinx, Into the Storm, Born for One Thing, and um, a little bit further down, Another World, are really, are really the ones that I find myself listening to the most because they're really, really good fucking songs. <clears throat> and it's not that I dislike the rest of the record, it's just they they don't hold up as they don't hold as much weight currently with me. 
outside of that, I'm sure once they do sit with me that this record may be my, one of my top records of the year. Um, I am going to give that another listen. Now, bone of contention, because the next band I'm going to talk about is this band, At The Gates. And you guys have all known with this record for me is a massive, massive record because it's powerful. It by far is one of the best records they've ever released. And you get these bands that release these records and they can never, ever, ever top it in any way, shape, or form or even come close. And that's a record where I was talking to a friend of mine and he and I seem to agree that their legacy literally should be Slaughter of the Soul. Because it's almost, as Sam Dunn numerous times has said, it's almost a perfect metal album. <laughs> um, at War With Reality, I was okay with. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a complete fan of it. But it's far better than To Drink From The Night Itself. Now, I've only given To Drink From The Night Itself a listen once. Because when I heard that title track, I was like, oh, it's too much like Blinded By Fear. And not that that's a bad thing in some cases, but in their case, I don't really think you guys should be going and, you know, re rehashing out a song from a previous record. And, and when I say that, it's only the main riff. Because the rest of it, once that once uh, once uh, Tomas starts singing, he it goes kind of down more of a melodic sort of path riff wise. The nightmare of being. It's not come out on Friday. Now, this record and some of the comments that the band has made has been they want to be the King Crimson of death metal. Hmm. Yeah. So there's a saxophone on the record. I didn't pay attention to which song. Um, why? Because on first listen, and I'm going to listen to it again a couple more times just to make sure that it's where I think it is. It's not memorable in any way, shape, or form. In all honesty, I think Anders' vocals is just about gone. Now, shoot me, castrate me, do whatever thou wilt, but I'm sorry, when you have a record that come out back in 1996, 95, that, of this caliber, now, yes, I will, I do, and I am very well aware that this come out in the fucking mid nineties, but they haven't put out anything worthwhile since. Okay, and War with Reality was a good record. To drink from the night itself was a okay record. This is a major letdown from a band that people were so stoked when they fucking returned in two thousand six. There's. While I understand what they're doing, I know what they're going for. <sighs> I like the new tool, tool record better than I do that. Now, with Gojira's new, with, with uh, Fortitude, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I listen to it a bit more to see if I'm missing something. Now, Let's talk about the other band. This band I have nothing from at all. That band is Hatriot. Now, Hatriot is an American thrash metal band. Now, I'm strictly reading this from Wikipedia because I can't find fuck all for other information on these cats whatsoever. Um, you'd think with a, a thing as big as the inter interwebs, you'd find something, but no. Hatriot, uh, as I was saying, is an American thrash metal band formed in 2011. 
by former singer of Exodus, Steve Zetro Souza, and guitarist Costa Varvat Var Pfft. Varvaticus. The band's current lineup includes Kevin Patterson on guitar and Souza's sons, Nick Souza on drums and on bass and vocals, Cody Souza. Now, when you look at that, you're probably thinking, well, Zetro went back to Exodus. And he did. He did. Abso absolutely. He left. Uh, he was only there for four years. He, yeah, so he was there from 2011 to 2015, and then once 2015, once he left to go back to Exodus, because as we know, they put out that stunner of a record called, uh, uh, oh my lord, Blood Him Blood Out, hello, and they're going to be coming out with uh, Persona, Persona Non Grata in November, from what I was told. Now, with Hatriot, you have... Cody and Nick Souza on bass and vocals for Cody, drums for Nick, and Costa and Kevin both on guitars. When you listen to these guys, it's fucking Exodus in every way, shape, or form. But the younger, more pissed off, and far... I don't want to say nastier because Exodus is a fucking monster into itself, but for a band of... You know, two guys that come from metal, thrash metal pedigree in Zedro. When you listen to Cody sing, I had to actually sit there and fucking look through everything to see if I was wrong on their uh, 2019 record, which was, uh, yeah, from Days Under Darkness. I'm like, is that Zedro? No, it's fucking Cody. It's his fucking kid, man. Um, I got both of those dudes on, on fucking Instagram, and they're great follows. They're always posting stuff. They're always talking to fans. Cody literally, outside of the odd death growls that are in there, and I may be wrong. That may not be Cody, but if that is Cody, I I mean, congr you know, good job, kiddo, but... Cody's literally his fucking father on vocals, okay? When you listen, you're like, holy fuck. And to be honest, I didn't really pay too much attention to Exodus in terms of their kids and stuff. It was mostly about the dudes, but when I was, obviously, when you start following some of these guys online and, like, on social media, like Instagram and stuff, and you realize that they got kids and fuck are they... Oh, excuse me. And fuck are they ever, ever talented. Like, holy shit. But yeah, um, I'm going to be hopefully picking up at some point. Not currently, but at some point I will be picking up um, some Hatriot stuff. Um, it looks like they have a new record coming out this year. Um, in 2021 called Veil of Shadows. So, yeah. I'm, I can't wait for that. Hopefully it's going to be a pretty monster record. Um, but when you... Now, I'm going to put in the description of this to the uh, to Zetro's Toxic Vault, which it's uh, it's Zetro's YouTube channel, and he interviews quite a lot of guys and they talk about old, old Exodus records and stuff. And I watched the you know near three-hour interview that he did with Rob Dukes, and that was fucking fantastic. I was stoked about that. And, of course, he does an interview with Cody, and, like, you gotta watch it because it's, like, because you're sitting here, you're like, Cody, Zetro, Cody, Zetro. Listening to them talk, like, they like they sound very much alike, obviously, because they're father-son. But one will get going like this, and the, and, and the other gets going like that, and, and it's like, okay, which, who do I focus on here? And it's, it's, it's rather funny. But these guys are fucking excellent. If any of you guys in the vinyl community are looking for a brand new band to get into, brand new, I mean by like fucking 10 years old, um, yeah, these guys are it. If you're looking for a band to, you know, when, whenever Exodus calls it a day, man, I'd, I'd, I'd hang out with the Hadrian kids because those guys are going to fucking make your life perfect in every way. Excellent fucking Bay Area thrash. Get into it. You'll love it.
And that uh, From Days Under Darkness is a far better record than At The Gates' new one. And it was out two years ago. Gonna go back and listen to those records. Maybe I'm missing something. I hope I am, but if not... I don't know, man. I almost think At The Gates should hang it up. But that's a video for another day. You guys have been awesome. Cheers, and see you soon.